Sometimes with Entity Framework, we write some queries that we think are super efficient, and it turns out they're not. There are ways to fix that. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to talk about projections. Fancy, fancy. So if you remember from a previous episode, we built this uh, funny little Twitter clone called Rarrr. <laughs> <laughs> Easily pronounceable, but very memorable. So <laughs> much. The lovely Twitter clone where every tweet has three likes because my data is very uniform. Um, but Last time we talked about uh, loading related data and how we kind of needed, you know, we have the tweet and then we wanted to get the author's hat name and then we wanted the count of the number of likes. And this was all related data that we needed to query through our model. And we used the dot include extension methods to tell any framework to include the author and include the likes. Now, when we look at the actual uh, queries here that were generated. I'm actually just going to copy those and then right here in, I'll just close or stop the app. So I can actually run this query so that we can see what it looks like. So there's two queries which kind of shows some differences here in in general with Entity Framework Core versus previous versions. So there's a parameter that comes in here, it's an integer, and that was our page size, so same take 10. And I think that's all I need to do to run this now. So my results come back, I actually get two result sets. So the first is uh, the tweets with the author name, uh, the author information brought in. So it's a, a join of the tweet table and the user table uh, on the author ID. And it's able to do that in the single query because uh, tweets to authors is a one-to-one -one relationship. So a tweet has one author. In the past, we were also including the likes, which is now one-to-many, so a tweet has many likes. And in the past, Entity Framework would have actually joined the likes right in here in the single query, it would have done it all in one query, but in doing so it would have severely bloated the data that was coming back uh, because it would have repeated all of this information for every like that the tweet had. So in our case we would have had this three times, this would have been repeated three times, and you end up with a really big bloated result set. So they've done this using multiple result sets in this version of Entity Framework, which is much smarter, and they're able to still stitch it together uh, because they're ordering by IDs in a certain way. Uh, it looks so does this mean that uh, every connection string that you have now with ng framework is going to have that multiple active result sets thing on yes. it? Yes, and if you look at the, uh, the project template, that's the wrong place, but if we look at our app settings, I believe that is actually on there. Yeah. So mm -hmm. multiple right. active, also known as Mars. Is Mars. Mars. So yeah, you will notice that as a, a change potentially in the templates. Uh, so what this should be doing is returning 10 tweets and then returning the likes for only those 10 tweets. And it looks like the query says it should be doing that, but for some reason, I don't know if I've just run into an edge case here, uh, but it's returning all the likes from the database. Uh, so I would expect 30, re 30 rows in this table result set for the likes. For some reason, I'm getting 1,200, which is everything from my database. Um, but regardless, even if it was only 30, it's still a lot more data than, I'm, than I need to render this page. Because this page, I'm only displaying the number of likes. That's the only information I'm actually getting from the likes. Um, so we can still make this a lot more efficient than, than it is currently, even if we assume that whatever bug this is was fixed. Um, and we would do that using projections. So what I've done is we're going to take those results from the database and project them onto a new class, uh, which I'll call a, tw a tweet summary, which just has the information that we need to render that page. So that'll be a, an ID, 
the text of the tweet, the author name, and the count of the number of likes. And building that's pretty easy using a link projection. So I start out the same way. I'm going to say select my from my tweets. I'm going to say select. And this is the projection part. So I'm going to say instead of a tweet, return a new tweet summary. And the tweet ID will be equal to the ID of the tweet. The text equals the text. The author name equals, and this is where we get to start to uh, go through those relationships. We're saying uh, the t.author.username. And finally, the like count equals t.likes.count. And that's the only change I need. I'm going to move this order by ahead and only take 10 of those. Okay, so um, for viewers, then, what is the significance of moving that order by up ahead of the projection? I'm not actually sure if the, or the order by is necessary at this point. Um, typically, if you're doing a take or if you're doing a skip and a take, you do need an order by in your statement. So in this case, I moved it up because I'm saying order it based on at this point, I'm still dealing with tweets as opposed to tweet summaries. So I'm saying order it by the tweets, and then from that, project my tweet summaries. Um, now, before we can actually look at the query that's generated here, we'll have to go and change our view, which was here. So now, instead of taking, uh, ex expecting an I enumerable of tweet, it's now tweet summary. So about this time you regret being so verbose in your namespaces. That's for sure. Dot view models, dot view models. <laughs> I'm not quite that repetitive at least. Hey, we found it. <laughs> okay. It's not Java. So text is still there. Instead of author dot username, now we can say author name. And instead of likes dot count, we just say the like count. And I should be able to run this, and the application should work the same as it did before. We should see that list of recent tweets. Still working as expected. And if we look at our generated query now, uh, we should see only the one query, which is what we expected. And let's bring that in here and run it, just to confirm. There it is. A very With simple only the result 10 set. Only 10 rows, one result set, only the data we needed. And so not only is it more efficient, efficient, but I really like the, the way it cleaned up the view itself, that we didn't have to have yeah. quite so many dots in there. Yeah, everything became a lot more concise, which is a good thing. So a, a projection that is simply um, only selecting out the fields that we want from the database and then mapping those back through either, I mean, I've seen people do anonymous classes, but obviously having some kind of view model is is easier to work with because we've got IntelliSense and things like that on the front end as well. So it's taking uh, just your select set of properties and mapping them to some structure that doesn't necessarily represent something that's in the database. Right. Yeah, and that's the cool thing is Entity Framework knows nothing about tweet summary. It's not part of my DB context. It's not something that it understands the mapping for. It's simply something that is needed for my view, and I'm able to tell Entity Framework how to map to it in a very concise way. Now, repeating these types of queries everywhere in your application, probably not a great idea. You might want to uh, put that in a more consistent place that it can be reused. So we're going to talk a bit about that later on in a future episode. Excellent. Great. Well, thanks everybody for coming up and joining us on another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. Uh, so remember to like, share, and uh, email us any questions that you might have. Uh, if we have questions that are pertinent, we will show them on the episode and we'll, we'll answer them live.
Just like we did here from Lef, who asked us via Channel 9 after episode 51, an intro to Nginx for Kestrel. Now, this wasn't actually a question specific to ASP.NET Core, uh, but uh, Simon, you were using uh, something that gave you a little bit of some power up in your uh, console. So uh, Lef had asked, how do you get OSX decorations for Git? Uh, so I actually use a shell called ZSH, uh, which is different from the Bash that most people know. Uh, it's a slightly more modern version, I guess. Uh, lots of different features and options for it. And one of the, the tools that I use for that is a, a tool called OhMySZSH. Uh, so you can go to ohmyz.sh. Uh, and that's a, a tool chain that you can install. And one of the things that it comes with right out of the box is the, the Git decorations there. So it'll tell you kind of uh, how many changes you have, outstanding, and so on and so forth. So it, it makes working with Git a lot easier. Uh, if you are not on OS X or uh, some sort of Unix system, there is a similar sort of tool that provides that information in PowerShell. Uh, which I totally remembered at the beginning of the sentence and have forgotten now, PoshGit is uh, the name of the tool. Uh, so you can go and install that. Uh, it's in chocolatey. So you can just do your, your C inst uh, PoshGit and that will add the same sorts of annotations to PowerShell. Yeah, and actually one thing that I like to use uh, that Dave, you actually introduced me to was con, is it con EMU? Yeah. Con MU. Yeah. And then I use, uh, I load up uh, PoshKit inside of that as my default and I point it right at my code directory. So whenever I start up, I'm like always ready to go. So, uh, Lef, thank you very much for that comment. We have, send us a direct message on Twitter, Lef. Uh, we can't identify you from the Channel 9 questions, but we'd love to hear from you. And we would love to send you one of these very attractive laptop performance enhancing stickers that you would you will be able to do so uh send contact us on uh, twitter we'll do that exchange we'll get your address and we'll have this sent out to you right away that uh, that sticker gives five extra megahertz to your laptop at least yep it's like a turbo button a really weak one <laughs> but yeah all right thanks everyone we'll see you next time cheers bye